against uh, Dragons. Only Hugo Aradu and his uh, second row partner, Mikel Capelli, start in the pack who started last weekend. Thomas Carroll amongst the backs also starts along with Amaniasi Tuimaba. Apart from that, everybody else is a new face in the starting lineup. Well, there are only six who started the uh, defeat away at Gloucester in England who start for Clermont this weekend. They are Thibault Lana in the second row alongside Rob Simmons, the Australian who comes in for Thomas Lavanini. Peter Gus Soakula is one of those who stays, although he moves from the blind side to number eight. Further back, Bergdista Delgi starts on the right wing, as he did last week, and Alex Newsom, who had a terrific... Uh, European window, even though Claremont actually struggled as a team. Couldn't back up the win over Edinburgh with a uh, away day at Gloucester. Both teams won one and lost one. The difference being that uh, those results mean that Claremont are second in their pool, but Poe are in fifth, which would not get them into knockout rugby, should that uh, be the same after the next uh, round after the new year. Well, you would say the Christmas spirit is inside the stadium, but it's always here, to be honest with you. It's a wonderful place. The whole of the Southwest rugby fanatics, each club with their own traditions, their own heroes. Unfortunately for Poe, no Sam Whitelock. He was due to make his debut today, but unfortunately got concussion in training. And so the uh, two-time World Cup winner from New Zealand will have to wait a little longer before he can join his brother Luke on the playing field. So one more game before the presents are opened at Christmas here in France. One more game after that, before the new year. Luke Whitelock then will have to play on his own without his legendary older brother with him. There are still a few World Cup heroes who haven't quite managed to join their clubs yet. Pierre Brousset is our referee, so Stéphane Boyer, Mathieu Noiro on the touch lines. First time that he has overseen these two clubs this season. So away we go then. Poe, who are almost unbeatable at home, against the Claremont side who have been struggling away. Thibaut de Banya is back in at uh, scrum half today with Dan Robson on the bench. And Peter Gursa uh, so cool have tried to take that, but the New Zealand international uh, made a bit of a mess of it, but uh, Claremont still have it. Strong hands from Christian... Oleron. And a penalty and advance because of something that was said. Well, it was a uh, good play, but there you see the extra roll from the uh, Moldova international. And then the advancement of... Uh, 10 metres, making this a kickable penalty as well. In other words, he should have let go of the ball when he was on the ground. Oliran, and he didn't. Joe Simmons back in the side today, the former Exeter fly half who has been being magnificent, top scorer until uh, yesterday in top cattles.
off. And it's hit the post and rebounded. And so Claremont get away with one, and now they need to clear their lines. George Moala out to Raka, and Raka is off. Alvaretti Raka, French international, but not for a little while now. Injuries, fitness, form hampering him. All that might have gone forward. It was knocked on. Just confirming with his assistant it was uh, Pierre Brousset. Mistake by uh, Aminiasi Tuimaba, the 28 year old Fijian international winger. Been at uh, Po now since 2020. Started both of the European outings against Sharks and uh, against Dragons. This now his first top Cators appearance of the season. And just took his eye off the ball a little bit there and it got away from him. Better conditions today than last night in uh, Bordeaux where it was raining for the entire time. As Bordeaux beg took uh, Leon to the sword. Very impressive last night and Damien Perno didn't even score a try and yet they had six different scorers. Very impressive in the rain. And Marcos Crema seems to have a problem. Combative back row from Argentina. Anthony Bello watching on. Well, it'll take more than that to get Kremer off the pitch. He's back on again then. He had a good World Cup as well with Argentina as they made it to the semi-finals yet again at a World Cup. They are becoming regulars to the last four of the world's biggest international competition in the sport. So, first test in the scrum. It was very, very solid last night, Ube Bay against Lyon until uh, Roman Tafafanua was sent off on half-time. That was pretty good as well. George Moala, who beat more men in the two rounds of the European Challenge Cup than anybody else, and he's doing it again here. What a run. Forward comes a Sowakula. Oh, big hit on uh, Bautista Delgi. Kramer's international teammate with Argentina. Spread back by the uh, scrum half, Sebastian Bezzi. French international, uh, but... Uh, Rather been left behind now on the international scene by those that have come after him. He could say the same thing as well for Benjamin Erde Paletti with Argentina. Didn't go to the World Cup and a mistake there from the visitors. Taken well by the Argentine fly half, but that wasn't the best ball for Raka. And uh, Leon Dare Carrer, the 19 year old centre, who's uh, switched from number 12 to number 13 today, the outside centre position. Another exciting talent coming through, former La Rochelle and Cast man. But rather hung out to dry there by that ball. So then, Poe will uh, reclaim possession as Sebastian Picarones watches on. Fabulous start to his career in charge of Poe. Their success built on rock solid home form. Not afraid to change things around as well. And uh, he's uh, really believed in this man as well here. Young uh, Theo Atisogbe. Why wouldn't you? He's been fearless so far in his young career. And there's the backing fully of his coach. Out it comes the back then, thrown out by uh, Dubania. Yeah. It's Emilian uh, Gaëtan, yeah. who uh, will have the ball taken from him because of a knock-on. Not quite having the same season as last season. You see there, he uh, took the ball, but uh, George Moana had already started to make the challenge. It was knocked on, accidental, but it was all done because Gaëtan couldn't hold on to the ball to start with. 
coming off the back of a magnificent try scoring season last season, Emilio Gaetan. Just the one try, though, so far this season for a man who scored 14 in top cators in the 2022 23 campaign. And that for a team that was struggling at the wrong end of the table. Albeit just above the, uh, the drop zone most of the time. So then, here we go. Off the bat by Suakula. Good tackling. Poe saw that one early. Kramer. Former Stade Francais man in his first season with uh, Clermont as uh, Suakula takes it once more. Mm, it was a good hit by uh, Siate uh, Torolahi. Yeah, Tongan tight head prop. Been a pole man since 2021 now. All dropped again. Well, a lack of coordination there between Joe Simmons, the fly half, and his uh, left wing Thomas Carroll, who's been playing very well recently. This is his fifth start. Five matches, started both the European games. Full back in the loss at Sharks, but a left wing in the win against Dragons. Versatile. Sebastian Bezzi already blowing hard. Flexion! Forward by Ode Paletta. And he'll find touch just outside the 22. Anthony Bello has uh, started this game. He was supposed to be Alex Newsom, but uh, he has not come out for the start. There must have been an issue for it. The versatile Australian in the warm-up. So it is the fly half. Anthony Bella, who's on the pitch, and uh, so there are two fly halves on it. There's Odi Paletta, one of them, sending that ball forward, and it will be a chance here for Luca Ray to uh, impress with the line out. And it's very nicely into the hands of young Hugo Urodu. Thibaut de Bagna. Off the back of the ruck. Kremer waiting to charge down. However, the ball has already gone by the time he even reacts. Bello. Former Toulon man races inside and uh, there's a knock on. There's been a lot of knock ons early on in this uh, opening 10 minutes or so. So then, Scrum. That was a good initial uh, run away, but. Uh, I don't know, did that hit there, Sam Whitelock? Going through concussion protocols, so unfortunately, the man who's uh, reached the last three World Cup finals is uh, being made to wait. He's just been seen on the big screen. All these uh, fans would have been expecting to see him on the pitch today for his debut. His brother is there, though, as he has been for the last few seasons. Maybe we'll see him against Oyana next weekend. See a Khaleesi. He made his debut against La Rochelle, and that uh, will be uh, Poe's next home game. Just to throw it out there. 
on guard l'espace. They are engaging too early, the referee is saying, in other words. And he wants them to wait for his instructions. De Banya off the back, decides to uh, come to the open side. He, he thought about the blind side, he fends it out to Joe Simmons instead. De Banya again there at the base of the ruck and feeds it back into the path of Luke Whitelock. De Banya at a sog bay. Now then, what can he do? Well, you can see he wants to run. He wasn't touched, so he got up and did another little extra piece of running, which is fine. Simmons, Gaetan, Gaetan, try to go through, but is well brought down by the hooker, Falau Fuanga. Poe making ground. De Banya. Simmons. Here they come once more. Nathan Decron, the 25-year-old centre. However, that's gone backwards. They'll have to start again. That's a little bit of space. That's really well done. And it's out to Tuimaba. Support is quick there in getting to the men in green. Siegfried Fischerhoi. The Tongan international. Loose head prop. They're going backwards again, though. Good defence there from uh, Claremont. The crowd can feel it. De Banya. So the kick comes, and that will be seen as a little bit of a victory for Claremont. It was hit by... Uh, de Paletta and not uh, Atisogbe, according to the referee. That's been... Um, that's well done by... Uh, Aminiasi to him, but... Ooh, hello. Somebody's putting an electric motor inside the ball and it's vibrating all over the place. Erde Paletta finally manages to get hold of it and he goes straight down the throw to Simmons. Over 100 points for the Englishman in his first season in France. He's been impressing everybody since he arrived. Erde Paletta, he's been impressing for many seasons, mainly for Castres. But now at Clermont, Bello, there's the advantage of having two fly halves, although that kick has been charged down. Emilien Gaetan. Picks it up again, and he's a strong physical runner. Here's the outside centre, who's only 20. Nicely done again. Out to Tagliavalu. Long passage of play, endless amounts of phases here for uh, Poe. They're doing really well here to keep the ball alive, but at the moment they are not really opening up this Claremont defence. Uh, offside, though. So just as we say that, they now have a free hit. Simmons, long pass out to to Imarba again. He's half held by Danny Kenner. Dubanya recycles once more. The kick from Simmons again over the top of Bello. And the referee realises there is no advantage in that. And as Benjamin Erde Paletta gets some attention on his left shoulder by the looks of it, which gives us a good chance to see the well, list of injured for uh, Claremont. Big misses there with Fisher and Lee in the, uh, the back row. Fabulous piece of play there by Tuimaba. Clearly, his feet were in... The field of play, not in touch. And that's where uh, Erde Paletta hurt his shoulder, falling against the uh, the shin of the Po player. Fifteen minutes gone, no score here at. Uh, Pose ground of the Stade de Amou, which can fit around about 13 or so thousand people in it, and often does. Luca Ray then with the line out. Murdy Paletta is still feeling it. There might be a little bit more work here for Anthony Bello. 
10 metres back being uh, asked to the backs. Ray feeds. It's nicely done to uh, Luke Whitelock and Ray picks it up once more. Dubanya, Gayeton, Gayeton, he's burst into the 22 and now a bit of momentum. The crowd rides just a little bit. Good progression this being made by Pope, forcing the defensive line backwards. Luca Ray plays scrum half. Into the number eight, Becca Gogadza. The Georgian international forward comes, Fischerhoy, the Tongan is stopped just outside the five-metre line. And then the ball is ripped away. And the referee... Okay. Illegal, going in off your feet into the... You plonge, you're diving in, is the translation of that. Have to stay on your feet. And, uh, well, unsurprisingly, Poe will go for the penalty. And this time, it should be straightforward right in front of the post. Big, strong run by Emilian Gaeton. They're amassing a pretty impressive squad now, and they've already started on next season. Talks in uh, the uh, reliable French rugby press of Toulon fullback Eimerick Luke joining Poe next season, as will the 24 year old Englishman from Lyon, Joel Kapoku. First points here, though, for Sebastian Picaroni's men and Poe Lee by three points to nil. And it's been a very hard piece of work today to get this far. So Oda Paletta gets us underway again with Poe having finally gone in front. Atisog Bay. Oh, that's lovely. Well, that's the sort of courage and conviction he has, and he set up a beautiful attack here. Fishihoy takes it on from the pass inside by Hugo Aradu. Poe here really racing. Look at that from Luca Ray, the hooker, sending a beautiful kick into the corner. Well, he obviously decided that uh, there wasn't an overlap on offer. But look at this from Atis Sogbe. Fakes the kick, goes inside and the offload as well to Aradu. Fissihoi goes there in support. That was very impressive. And robbed. And Poe have it on the try line. The forwards gather, looking to burst over. The first one doesn't get there. They will recycle. Luca Ray over the top of the ball in the scrum half roll. Once more, they're over. Does he get the ball down? Referee can't see anything yet. It's short. And now it is over. Two quick scores for Poe, and it's the loose head prop, Siegfried Fischerhoi, who has got their first try. Well, a mistake from Claremont at the line-out. This was the kick that set up that line-out from Luca Ray, the hooker for Poe. And from there, they stole the ball. And it's the loose head prop from Tonga, Fischerhoi. Who gets his first try for Poe? Joe Simmons, straight forward, and all of a sudden, Poe are in a 10-0 lead against Christoph Urios's men.
Well, yet more evidence here of the way that this post side this season have become much more lethal and ruthless when they get down into the red zone. Taki Taki Valu picks up the ball and uh, will recycle, ready for the exit. Thibaut Dubanya giving himself a long run up. Fafanga must be uh, nervous now after what just happened. Venez dans l'alignement. Il y a deux relayeurs. Non, 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 non. Je, je vous veux directement. Tout le monde de suite. Comme ça, ils peuvent s'adapter. Tout le monde ensemble. Reprise. That's better. Safely taken by Thibaut Lana. 25-year-old locked forward. And this round four with concussion against Leon in a friendly. Oh, that's uh, loose by Erda Paletta. Here oh. comes Peter Gus uh, Soakulu. The kick goes up, but Sogbo is there. And again, didn't look like he was in the right place to get that, and he's lost it this time. It's a little bit over exuberance. Well, a lot of good things happen because of the way he plays, so you don't want that to come out of him, but uh, just needed to protect the ball a little bit better. It's an amazing catch. He wasn't in the right place at all for that. Just plucked it out of the sky. I think it was Marcus Kramer who hit him. And... Uh, vibrated the ball out of his possession. So... The put in for Claremont then, and you can see there that uh, he's still hurting his shoulder. Early Paletta is not ideal, and of course they don't have a spare fly half on the bench anymore because he's already had to start the game. My one year we've been. <laughs> Maybe he needs to learn some French. Flexion. Right, so Thomas Chauvou and Thomas Domingo, Antoine Nicou and Jeffrey Elena Petit watching on from the gods. They will be happy with what they've seen so far. Po have been imposing themselves as they have done in against everybody so far this season. Joe Simmons high. Underneath it, so Akulu takes it well. He was impressive against uh, Gloucester last weekend in a side that uh, struggled, but. There are a lot of good things written about him during the week. Bezi. At a Sogbe again. Again, safe under the high ball. Now needs to make sure he keeps hold of it because Marcus Kramer joins him again. This time he does get the ball down. Simmons. Another high ball. Off goes Emilien Gaeton. It was Thomas Carroll trying to go there as well. Here is Carroll picking it up. Simmons, they'll come back the other way. Atis Sogbe, space for the youngster to run into. He feeds it out instead into the path of Tuimaba. Tackle called. Made by Bautista Delgi. Forward by Siate Tokalahi. 
Front forward sets up play, but not much else. Dubanya has to get that up quickly and high. Doesn't go very far as a result. And it's picked up by Kramer. However, his good play was rather undone by a loose pass, but it has been picked up by a fella Fainga. Erdi Paletta, Erdi Paletta straightens up and hits it against Gaito. George Moala at a Sogbe, turns away. And that is a superb piece of play against a man who can tackle like Moala can. So evasive. And Joe Simmons is back in place to be able to, to clear in a very English way. Oh, that's forward. He's not right, Erde Paletta. That shoulder is not allowing him to play. I don't know how much longer he's going to last. He can't throw the ball. That was the moment when he was hit. Well, he can kick the ball, but that's about it at the moment. And you can see there a little uh, move saying, look, I can't come on, I can't carry on. So he has to come off. And Pierre Foussac, the centre, will have to come on to replace him. And that will move Bello into Erdi Paletta's fly half position. Well, he's not doing his side any favours if he stays on, if he feels that bad. A little uh, beleaguered fly, high five there with Persili Yato and Daniel Bibi Bizarou. Disappointment for Christoph Urios. The game plan will have to change a little bit already this early on. We're barely half an hour into the game. starting off in fifth place in this game after being uh, knocked down by uh, Bordeaux Beg. Here comes a two in Marma, that's gone into touch though, and the first piece of play is a good one from the new man on Pierre Foussac. Two in Marma already wearing the, uh, the battle scars. Well, he did really well earlier to stop the ball going out, but that time he could do nothing about it under pressure. Yeah, Fusek on for his uh, seventh appearance. Scored one try this season in the round two win over Perpignan. Former Toulouse man in his first season with uh, Clermont. Bezzi sends it up higher. Another former Toulouse man. Tuimaba sets up play well. Dubanya wants the forwards coming into play. Hands it into Lekima Tagi Tagivalu. It's the kick this time, longer. Played forward by uh, Delgi. I think he was expecting a runner to go with him. Back he comes the other way. He looks disappointed. Does Tio Atisogbe there? I think he was hoping for a slightly longer kick. Crowd though seemed to like it. Just the other side of the halfway line. Balo Foinga gets a little word in the ear from Christian Ogevan. Foinga takes it, but he can't do anything with it. It was the number eight, uh, Becca Gogadza, who was hoping to rob the ball away from him. Forward comes Thibaut Lana. I haven't really got anything going yet, Claremont. I want to be able to really unveil the likes of Raka Moala, Delgi. After Sogbe, though, collects it again. They see, keep testing the youngster, and he keeps on passing the test. Yeah, like that one, that was better. More, more depth. 
on the kick this time from the 19-year-old. I think the crowd are not happy with the touch judge, who uh, has uh, bitten off a little bit of that distance that they thought he'd managed to get on it. There it is, but it did look a little bit further than that. When you compare it to the uh, trajectory of the last one. So Australian international Fainga. Safe delivery again, and he joins the back of the driving mall. Half an hour gone, Po 10, Clermont nil, and they haven't looked like scoring anything as yet. Moala feeds it out into the path of uh, the backs. Raka, Raka trying to break his way round. It's very well done by uh, Toma Carroll. Bello gets through one tackle, but uh, then he's picked up by Joe Simmons. And they're trying to set up here the, uh, the mall, and the Clermont have realised that and have started pushing themselves. Ball down. But the ball will be transferred. That's really good play here by Joe Simmons. Combination of him and Nathan Dacron. Setting up the ball, and once they've done that, they pushed it over. Time off because uh, Fisihoi needs some uh, attention. The Tongan loose head prop there, number one on your screen. Had uh, four matches at the Rugby World Cup recently, did uh, the Tongan against Ireland, Scotland, South Africa and Romania. Man who came into Poe from Stade Francais back in 2019, the former Bay of Plenty streamers. Front well forward as we take a little look at the impressive uh, Atis Sogbe. He looks so calm, even when things are going wrong. Doesn't upset his confidence or his ambition at all. Came through with a, a really impressive... Um, class of uh, France under 20 internationals along with the likes of Hugo Aradou who he plays with here plus uh, the scrum half for Clermont Batty Jono who is injured for this game unfortunately plus uh, the UBB duo of Marco Gazzotti who scored a try last night and Nicolas Deporter who set him up for one okay. Well, not happy. Benjamin early Paletta upset that he's not able to continue. I don't think they'll be too upset about it though. On the Poe backroom staff. They've already wrapped him up. So scrum time, seven minutes to go, Thibaut Dubanya feeds, good scrum from both sides, out to Simmons, out to Sogbe, that looks suspiciously forward, there from Thomas Carroll and the referee has blown his whistle. Just a forward pass, just slightly but enough. To Sogbe just going a little bit too quick. He was just stood in front of his man, you could see there. So, what can they unzip from the plan here at this scrum? It's a defensive scrum for Poe, with Claremont put in. Lovely sunshine on part of the stadium, packed full of enthusiastic local Poe supporters. We're on the... Uh, oh, it's been left behind by uh, Peter Gusso Akala, and all of a sudden... 
They're on the attack with number eight, Becca Gugadza. Simmons, long but straight down the throat of Alvaretti Raka. Former French international, decides to take a run. When he's not injured, he's a devastating player. Marcus Kramer accompanied by Etienne Fulgo. Bello now playing at fly half. No. Even though he started at fullback. Bon. So he's had to move twice now because of injuries to uh, his teammates. That's a massive kick from Joe Simmons. Well, he has been impressive since he arrived. Captain of Exeter last season, man who's won the European Champions Cup with them when they were rising to meet the force of Saracens. Bainga manages to find his man, Rob Simmons. Driving more. Bainga has it, the two Australians linking up well. And the former Western Force man has got a, a free kick, and off goes Sebastian Bezzi. Bello. Moala feeds it out into the path of Leon Dadicadier. Moala playing the scrum half. Good tackle. Well, you've seen the funny side is uh, Christopher Rios. Finally, they have a chance to go for some points themselves. A little tap on the back for uh, Anthony Bello. Just going a little too early there was uh, Lekima Takitagivalu. A little bit unfair to be uh, looking at <laughs> Benjamin Erdi Paletta. I'm sure he doesn't not want to be in the spotlight now. He would ordinarily have been taking this kick. Merci. Well, Bella was kicked 25. Point so far in all competitions. This is a long one. He's hit it well, straight down the middle. Has he got the legs? It has, and Claremont finally put some points on the board to the pleasure of a little smattering of uh, supporters who've come down from the massive Centrale in the middle of the country. So, ten points to three, and uh, Claremont finally arrived in the game. It's well taken by Simmons. Falgu. No. Who's head prop is met immediately by a wall of green. Bezzi, high. It's a decent kick, and Atasogbe takes it and knew he was going to get hit and held on anyway. Great play from the teenager. Brave. When Marcus Kramer is bearing down on you like that, you've really got to hold your nerve. Luca Ray recycles. A minute and a half to go until the break. Thibaut de Bagna told by our referee Pierre Brousset to use it. Bello, very close to the touchline. Kicks infield at Sogbe again. He's only once come unstuck. He hasn't dropped any high balls yet. Did manage to concede possession with a knock-on just afterwards, and uh, now he's given away a penalty here as well. Etienne Falgu, the man who uh, got into the jackling position, and at Sogbe didn't let go of the ball. So another opportunity for Bello. 
And having been 10 nothing down for the entirety of... Well, the, sorry, the entirety, for most of the first half, they've got a chance here to pull it back to a four-point margin at half-time. Flores won't be drawn. He's seen it all before. A variety of different clubs. Last of which was Union Bordeaux Beg. He was the man who was supposed to take them on to the next level, which didn't quite happen. They're still trying to find that next level beyond a semi final. Now trying to do a similar thing with Clermont. Similar kick here for Bello as he got the direction this time. It's flatter, it's gone wide. And at half time, just the one try so far for Poe. Scored by Siegfried Fitzhoy after 20 minutes at half time. It's Poe 10, Clermont 3. Let's talk to Luca Luke Reiden, and the interview is saying, well, that's a pretty close match, tight. Yeah, there were a lot of um, scrums. I think we're scrummaging pretty well. We need to uh, get into their territory more, though. And like we did uh, in the first try, we managed to capitalise on their errors. So Sebastian Bezzi, the um, scrum half. It was, uh, it was a hard first half, but you're still in it. Yeah, we made too many, too many mistakes. We're making a lot of errors. However, we're still managing to attack them. Have the ball a bit. But we need to be able to break through them a bit more. We haven't managed that, so it's been a bit hard. But uh, we'll continue. Very impressive Poe home unit. So then 10 points for three and a first touch for Peter Gus Soakalu. Former Chiefs and uh, Tanaki Bulls man who uh, lost the Super Rugby Pacific final with the former but won the uh, MPC final against Hawks Bay. Finishing a pretty successful period for him in New Zealand before making the long trip round the other side of the world to uh, join Claremont. It's Tuimaba, the Fijian international. And to uh, Tagi Tagivala, his Fijian international teammate. Joe Simmons launches high. Just outside the 22, perfect. Back by Newsom. And another kick. This time a bit longer from... Uh, the English fly half, it bounces. Picked up by Raka. And he decides he's going to have a little kick and go for the run himself. Dupanya takes it. <laughs> Offside. Yeah, it's not Raka who's actually been penalised here. It's the rest of the uh, Claremont side who weren't back far enough. All found themselves offside. So then they were thinking about the uh, the scrum, but in the end they're going to go for the uh, the points. So you can see they all have to get back. They can't be in front of the ball when play starts again. It's a shame because it was good play by Raka. To Banya must have... What was he thinking there with the express train as Alvarati Raka raining down on him as the ball was coming down for him to catch. Oh, that looks a little bit right. 
And he's put it right, and so it stays 10 points to three. That's a couple of misses now from Joe Simmons, which has not been like him since he arrived from Exeter Chiefs. Little shake of the head. He's come across to join his brother, Sam Simmons, who's uh, having a wor much worse time of it away at uh, Montpellier, well, right down the bottom of the table, although they won both their European encounters just to show what they are capable of doing. The 2022 champions. Newson took that well. Not the best ball towards him. Sebastian Bezzi finally gets back to uh, take over from Racket. Oyaman. Bezzi can't get there. And uh, Marcus Kramer was falling on the ball. Bellow. High. Tuimaba underneath it, brilliantly taken, and off to Simmons. Tuimaba already back on his feet, ready to take the ball. Dubanya, nice little play. Ray looking for the offload and finds it. Dubanya's there. He gets hit backwards though. Ruck formed. Told to get on with it. It was a legitimate counter up by uh, Soakalu. But Poa managing to hold on to possession. Simmons feeds it back out to Luke Whitelock. Dobanya. Gaeton. Gaeton trying to punch a hole again. Lays it off. Fishioi, the try scorer. Nice little sidestep from the loose head prop. That's what you live with these days in rugby. Front row forwards who've got a sidestep. That looks forward again as well. To Imaba. Still going. To Imaba. And the Jackal was there, not letting go. Tuimaba isolating himself because of the success of that run. And it's really good play from the man who came on for Benjamin Erdi Paletta, Pierre Fusak. There he is following in, into the Jackal position, squarely over the ball. Sometimes a, a burst through the defence can be too successful. Look at that. Absolutely flattening Anthony Bello. There's a slight look of Jonah Lomu to him when he does that. A much lamented New Zealand legend who redefined what a bat can do in the game of rugby. That is falling out of play. Well, the conversation all there is about whether or not uh, they were uh, letting go of the bind in that mall. Michael Gaetan had never scored a try in top 14 until round eight when uh, Poe beat Stade Francais in their last top 14. Game before last. Followed that up. With a uh, defeat away at Toulon. We're really entering into the technicalities there of what you're allowed to do, just retreating a little bit before pushing forward in to the uh, the scrum. Very much a learning process for front rows as they get used to what the latest referee will regard as acceptable, what they can get away with, what advantages they can take, how their movements will be interpreted. Fyinga has popped his head up. Australian international is used in a couple of matches in the warm-ups for the World Cup against Tonga and uh, Portugal, but then wasn't retained for the uh, the World Cup squad itself by Eddie Jones. Australia, of course, didn't do that well. Made, didn't make it out of the 
pool stage for the first time at a Rugby yeah. World Cup. Eddie Jones has subsequently left his post. Led in by Dubania, big push by both of them, and it's Poe who got the better of it. And a penalty has been given to Poe. And the referee clearly blaming Claremont for the uh, rotation of that scrum. He's blaming the second, the second row specifically. That's Thibaut Lana and Rob Simmons. Meanwhile, Joe Simmons has found the corner. Well, here's the reverse angle. Well, good luck to anybody who can sort that one out. Nicely taken by Hugo Oredu, the 20-year-old, safe as houses and sets up the driving more. Luca Ray has it and they're gaining some ground here. Luke Whitelock giving the instructions from the front of it. That's one off the bat. Thibaut Dabanya looking for the try line himself. Whitelock trying to go over is Nathan Dacor. Oh, brilliant from Joe Simmons. Taking it on the run, the Englishman, the younger brother of Montpellier, number eight, okay. Sam Simmons, doing the kind of job that the number eight would do often. Second try for Poe in the game. And they reassert themselves on their visitors. As Joe Simmons scores his first try in French rugby. Luca Ray there did well. And that's a brilliant take by the former Exeter Chiefs fly half. He'll convert it himself, and all of a sudden it's a 17 point to three lead for Poe. Starting to get away from them. Off comes Soakulu. As Bello gets us underway again. Two converted tries now the lead. Newsom. Well, if any man can uh, produce something to bring his side back in, it's the Australian. Etienne Foucault has come on. Change at hooker with uh, fellow Fainga coming off. Well, no thought of kicking. Oh, Oyavan has dropped it. It's gone forward as well. And Poe had it back again. Atisogbe feeds it along the line. Decron, Gaeton. Now it's Thomas Carroll. He runs into George Moala, which means he's not going any further. Simmons. Big hit and is taken on by Michael Capelli. Scored in one of the European games. Last week against Dragons. And then another roll forward, an extra roll. Me, says Hugo Oradu. Well, the crowd appreciate the effort anyway, even though it didn't ultimately work out. We are ten minutes into the second half and Poe beginning to assert themselves. Lovely off-the-cuff play. Atisogbe thought about throwing it. First of all, it was past Raka, but not past Moala. Tom Carroll, who is a, a versatile... Full backstroke, left wing. 
in the last of his uh, three seasons with Poe, having come in from La Rochelle, the former Racing 92 man. Six. Kylian Texier, who has been uh, asked to leave the field, the 21-year-old blind side flanker. On comes Luca Desen, 24-year-old, back row forward. Scored exactly one try in each of the last three seasons. <laughs> Very strong tackler is the 24-year-old. They need a bit of flair coming forward, though, to uh, Clermont. Sebastian Bezzi has the opportunity here from the scrum. <laughs> Forlorn sound to Pierre Brousset as he said, OK, let's do it again. Quand vous le voulez, les mêlées sont très propres, donc c'est votre responsabilité. Flexion. Lié. Je. Big push by Poe again. However, that's well countered by the men in yellow and blue, and Claremont on the attack with Fusak. It's gone into touch. A little bit frustrating for Christophe Urios. And Frédéric Charrier there, the, uh, the backs coach alongside him. Julien Lel, forwards and defence. Just couldn't stop himself. It was the last tackle coming in from Lakima Tagitagivalu as the try scorer Siegfried Fischihoy comes off to be uh, replaced by Remy Seneca on the loose head side of the scrum. Luca Ray, meanwhile, with the line out straight, good. Po ball. Decron token down by Moala. Dubanya. A little kick over the top here for uh, Simmons. Six. Offside. Tagi Tagi Valu. The number six is the man called out by the referee. And Bello can send the ball back into the Po half. First test then for uh, Foucard. Passes it, they're being pushed over. They realise Foucard comes back the other way. Moana has to leave it because it's a low pass. And then Elian Gaeton kicks it. Thomas Carroll can't collect the bouncing ball though. But, well, is there anything that Atis to Sogbe can't do? He manages to send it back into the field of play again. Clermont though have it, scrambling. Marcus Kremer fell down and uh, was hit by uh, Tagi Tagi Valu, but the referee saying it was the reason it was a high tackle was that the player was falling down into it. Sebastian Bezzi finds that to Sogbe as Rabba Slimani looks set to come back on as well. There's going to be a change on each side of the hooker with the loose head prop Daniel Bibi Bizuwu about to come on as well. Look at this then, for a volley, half volley, from young Theo Atisogbe. Good kick by Gaetan, not so good from Carroll, but sent back into play. Suddenly rugby, turns into football. Not often you see three touches of the ball, consecutive be all with the feet from three different players. Yuri Duhamel has come on as well. He takes his first line out after replacing Lukat Ray. 
However, the ball's gone back the other way. Persili Yato with his first touch as Dan Robson has come on as Poe scrum half for Thibaut Dubanya. Off to the other side. Bibi Bizawu's first touch. Moala. Raka. Raka, well brought down by Simmons. Turnover ball. Claremont have lost it again. Picked up by Yuri Duhamel. Here is Robson. Two Englishmen on the pitch then and now for Section Paloise. The England International's first kick is a little short. It's going to bounce back though. Nobody really knows where to go with it. Nearly taken by Lena. However, Robson has it. Gurum Papidza, the replacement tight head prop, who's come on for Siate Tokalahi. Capelli, still on in the second row. <laughs> Marcus Kramer trying to crawl his way out from the tackle. Robson again. Looking to see what's there, and he's uh, drawn Thibaut Lanon offside. Merci. Bello was supposed to be wearing the number 21 shirt today, but ended up wearing the number 15. Atisogbe, he'll send it back where it came from. He thinks he can see some space, but uh, into Alex Newsom. Newsom's got a lot of green grass ahead of him. He decides to kick as well, though, and chase after it himself, but it's going to be caught by Simmons, and he decides to call it a day and calls the mark. A lot of running there in that little game of kick tennis. Plisson on the left-hand side, already injured, and uh, fellow fly-half Benjamin Ode Paletto, who was injured today. No, no, no. Anthony Bello Merci, is the uh, fit and healthy fly-half on the pitch. Oh, it's nice. Newsom. Feeds it out into Rack and Newsom takes it again, and they're that close to the first try for them in the game. Fed up by Bezzi. Are they over? They are. And finally, the visitors have their first five pointer. And it's the ex Australian international, Rob Simmons. <laughs> His first try since the opening day against Oyana. Finally, a bit of direct running, a bit of pace. Quick ball at the ruck. Makes all the difference. Lovely passage of play, good quick passing. Racker finds Newsom. Newsom nearly made it himself. Great piece of defence to keep him out. But the numbers were there. Quick enough ball again. And the stretch across. One Australian couldn't finish it off. And it actually looks like it's Etienne Foucard, I think, who's actually got the touchdown with uh, Rob Simmons coming over the top of him. Bellows missed it. So it's 17-8 rather than 17-10, which makes a big difference. Okay. 
Arrête du temps. Ouais. Ok. Neuf jaunes. Sound, there's a change at scrum half. Sebastian Betty comes off and uh, on comes Batty's Joano. One match out, so he's had a, a few uh, problems today with his ankles. Twisted his ankle against a Perpignan in round two and then had a longer time out after recurrence of it against Montpellier in round six. He, uh, hopefully, the ankle is fine now. Talented, young scrum half coming through in the French game. It's well taken by uh, Becca Gagadze. Yeah, you can come across, but you can't tackle a player through the ruck. So Poe able to go dive right the way into the 22. As we hit the hour mark here at the Stade de Hamou. Poe 17, Clermont 8. Clermont have scored a try, but the misconversion means that they still need two scores again. However, at least it's now down to a converted try. And a penalty or a drop goal. Clermont have it. And they also have a penalty for being Merci. the jumper being dragged down from the air. Hugo Oredu, the youngster, the man found culpable. Anthony Bello can kick them away from danger. Claremont, that is. So difficult to resist that, to be honest with you. French TV having a word with uh, Christophe Urios. Etienne yeah. Ficard has it at the back. The try scorer. Big push from Poe as well, stopping it. They're surely going to have to recycle this another way. Joano, Kremer. Kremer decides to run straight at uh, Simmons, who does eventually bring him down. Good defending from the uh, slightly built fly half. More than once in this game. Thibaut Lana. No way through. Joano comes back and kicks and has gone out on the full. Well, every time that Clermont have got any kind of momentum, they've managed to undo it. They've only managed to follow through once, and that's when they scored the try. But other than that, it's been a series of mistakes, both in defence and in attack that has really hindered their ability to be able to counter Poe's advances. Georgian international Goran Papidza coming across for a word with Yuri Delamel. Well then, what will that translate into the tactics here? Oh, not very good. Rob Simmons there up and takes it for Clermont. Yato. Juano refeeds out to Bello. Newsom. Juano again. Kramer, Bello, Yato. Same men all involved again. Juano once more. Not a good pass out, but it's taken by Bello. He's tackled by Robson and Luke Whitelock. Claremont trying to come forward. Eventually, Poe. Get rid of the danger again through Teo to Sogbe. Haven't really seen much from him in terms of attack today, but there's been plenty from him in terms of defence, especially under the high ball. Looks like he's just hurt himself a little bit. Oh, what's he done? Is he... Uh, Turned his ankle. 
Well, they are down a man at the moment, effectively, our Po, as Posiliato races. Okay, merci. Tough to bring him down. Okay. Forward by Fusak. Good run by Simmons. The Australian almost managed to break a hole clean through. Referee's going to come back. There's no advantage for Clermont. Twice the referee saying the uh, tackler from Po did not roll away afterwards. Goran Papidza realizes that he's been signalled out. So they're going to get rid of the uh, the part where they need a penalty. Rob Simmons brought down by Papitza, and then you'll see that he doesn't disengage, he just stays there, rolls over. A pretty easy penalty to give. Well, the Poe supporters trying to encourage their team with the club anthem. Meanwhile, Anthony Bello has reduced the deficit. 17 points to 11. So then a converted try will now win it for Claremont. Off comes Capelli. Tagi Tagi Valo also getting a sit down as well after a, a long hard shift. Joe Simmons underway once more. Six points in it now. Two penalties or a converted try for Claremont. Still not enough for a defensive bonus point yet. They need another score to take at least that. So then Fabrice Metz is the man who's come on for Capelli for his uh, 11th appearance of the season. The man who's closing in on 220 appearances in Top Gator's rugby. The 32-year-old lock. That was not a good piece of play immediately from Metz, dragging down Rob Simmons. Yeah, not clever. Not surprising that uh, Rob Simmons felt that impact as he hit the ground. Well, we might see Sam Whitelock next week. Concussion protocol denying us his debut in front of a home crowd. Foucard, Simmons catches. Well, the training card routine works there. Foucard trying to roll them forward. The two second rows, Thibault and <laughs> Lanan and uh, Rob Simmons trying to drive them forward. But they've come down and they've had to recycle. George Mawala, Bello. Long pass out to Alex Newsom. Newsom looks for the little kick through. And Poe have it. Is that high from Fusak? Referee says no. Robson is there. That's well stabilized by Poe's defense again. Robson's decides to kick and gets some length on it as well. Caught by Newsom, who decides he's not going to bother trying to play that one quickly. Nathan Decron not happy with some attention that he got. It's that drive. 
And the referee's going to let play carry on. It's a line-out ball That's to uh, Claremont with just over 10 minutes to go. Foucault again trying to get this driving ball working for Claremont. Poe trying to plug the gaps. Foucault bursts through. Joano, Moana. Moana is well taken down by Decon. Bello, Raka. Raka straightens, goes past Gaeton. Ball's gone backwards, says the referee. Fusak. Gaeton is there and pushes him into touch. And a frustrated expression on the faces of the Clermont players once more. Well, it was good to start with. Nice play. Raka straightened it up, got through Gaeton. Fusak, though, decided to go wide. And we said before, Emilien Gaeton is a big, strong centre. However, they've lost the ball once more. Rabat Slimani, the former French international tight head prop, comes forward and then holds on to the ball when he goes down. More mistakes from Clermont. Surprising as well from a man of 34 years old with such experience. French international for eight years until 2018. Then retired from international rugby and has been carrying on for his club ever since. Former Stade Francais man moved to Clermont just before those uh, last international hurrahs for France. You see that brilliant piece of jackling by the number eight. Becca Gugazzo was immediately in position, taken short this time. It's the pizza who gets it. No way through for Tumar, but Joe Simmons launches long and off goes Atisogbe. Simmons knew some though, just as safe as houses as the youngster is underneath the house. The high ball and has been doing it for a few more years. Simmons. The Claremont Simmons, that is, without the D. That is Sogbe underneath it once more and again. Oh no, it wasn't safe. He's dropped it. Tom Carroll helps out his teammate. However, there's a knock on. Well, he went up for it, saw Raka, and he went straight through his arms, just as I've been building him up to being so safe under the high ball. He suddenly saw that Alvaretti Raka was just a couple of moments away from him, and suddenly that was enough to take his eyes off the ball. Tagi Tagi is going to come back on again for uh, Oradu. Players are allowed to come off and come back on again as long as they haven't been injured and as long as they don't go straight back into the same place that they started the game. Which is why you get second row forwards coming on as third row forwards and vice versa. And also why so many second row and third row forwards are interchangeable now. Yep. Clermont engaging too early and uh, conceding a free kick. Well, it's uh, Foucault's responsibility. It's the hooker who puts the break on until they want to go forward. You see the break foot forward, stopping the uh, men behind him pushing. Newsom. Back by uh, Joe Simmons. Big hit, but it'd probably be played fast than is. Wasn't deep enough into. The off-field area. Atisogbe, he decides he's going to kick. It's not really a run. Newsom again. Atisogbe once more, not under pressure this time, and he's uh, managed to sidestep uh, Bello. That looked a little bit high. And there is an advantage being played now for Poe. Marcus Kremer stops any further progression. And the referee's seen enough. 
And there's a bit of trouble. And it's Marcus Kremer, as usual, is always involved. He's been dragged away by Taki Taki Valu, but it's still continuing. Foucard on this near side. With who looks like Fabrice Metz, I think. Tui Marva getting involved in peacemaking with Kramer as well. Well, he's been bleeding like that for pretty much most of the game. There's the Fijian international right wing. Back from the broken arm that he uh, saw his season ended with last campaign in May. Quite sure exactly what sparked that. Referee, though, he's decided just to get on with it. So then the high tackle is penalised and Joe Simmons sends the ball upfield. And we are into almost the last seven minutes of the game. And we got a sub base coming off. Well, he's hugely popular already around these parts. Sebastian Picarone's a little word with uh, his young, burgeoning star. And he is replaced by Axel Despair, another 19-year-old. Carroll wrapped up by Slimani. Oh, at the moment, just looking for the victory. They need a couple more tries if they want an attacking bonus point to go with it. And they've got to worry about Turkey first. They can put the bread sauce on afterwards. Oh, and dropped by Bello forward. Picked up by Luke Whitelock. I think there are two... What has happened there? Was that not knocked forward by Bello? No, one derrière. Well, the answer was immediately answered by the referee. He says no, it went backwards. Well, that's the forward pass from uh, Tagi Tagi Valu. Well, all very exciting, but we get back to another scrum. The uh, game seems to have been a long succession of scrums. It has uh, rather slowed down a game that has threatened to break out a few times. Knock-ons, forward passes. have just stopped it becoming a classic. Full penalty now for uh, Clermont, and they can clear their lines up to halfway. Nicely taken by Whitelock. Big rummage forward by Fabrice Metz. Holding on once more. Dan Robson trying to uh, pretend that he didn't realise that the uh, decision had gone the other way. Incredible to think that Claremont still have a chance of winning this game. It has not been a complete performance at all from Christoph Urios's men, and yet there is a possibility here that they could, just could, get a second away win of the season, and this will be a much more impressive one.
Stolen. Huge roar as if they scored a try. There's a few nervous people around the Stade de Amour at the moment. Poe have won their last eight matches at home in top Catals, their longest such run in the league. Only Toulouse and Cast are on a longer such run at the moment. But Claremont here, very much in a position to be able to do something about it. Off the foot, says the referee. Well, the home crowd feel that Poe need support, and they are fully behind them then. Dan Robson kicks it forward again with just over two minutes to go. Newsom, Racker. Racker decides to kick and rather scuffs it, but it might work out well. That's really well collected by Carroll. Carroll back the other way, beats one man. Racker collects him, though. Really big hit. Robson, though, has it. Gaetan. Tui Marba comes back inside. Tui Marba is away, and he could win it. What a try! Abaniasi Tui Marba streaks away to give them the victory. And Poe will spend at least the next week inside the playoff places. What a Christmas present from the bloodied Fijian international. Is too much for some. They've had to fight. It might not be the bonus point win they want, but the victory is now assured. With their best move of the match. What a cutback this is. Against the grain. Zigzagging his way to the try line. Merci. And that has lit up the Stade d'Amo the night before Christmas Eve. <laughs> well, Joe Simmons has not had his best kicking night. But it doesn't matter in the end, because it will still feel good to everybody who is a supporter of Green. Twenty-two, eleven. Eleven points now. The difference between them. It'll need something of a miracle, a Christmas miracle for Claremont now, as we turn to the 80 meters minutes the referee blows for the end of the match and Poe come away with the victory that they wanted it hasn't finished yet actually we have one more scrum Sam Whitelock on his feet like everybody else. Ready to celebrate this victory. <laughs> the referee's given a penalty to uh, Claremont. The crowd are cheering home. <laughs> Sam Whitelock knows. Well, 
Well, if Clermont can get seven points, they can get back to four points, which would mean a defensive bonus point. So that is important as uh, Nathan Decron. Now, what happened there is Decron was tackled. He did not let go of the ball before getting back up and running on. So Anthony Bello looks for the corner and finds it. And Claremont will have one more chance here to rescue themselves a defensive bonus point. It won't make any difference to where the four points are going. They are going to Poe. But it's whether or not Claremont can take anything home with them themselves. Referee's happy with the Poe man coming through, trying to steal the ball away. It's Metz trying to rob it. That's one stop. Most of the Poe men are facing the wrong way now. Moala off the bat. Moala, he can finish. And he's into touch, and that will be it. And it breaks and kicks off again at full time. Oh, this is a shame that the game finishes this way. With a general melee. The referee let one of these go earlier, but will he let it go this time? Well, the atmosphere is fabulous inside the ground. Nathan Decron could be in trouble here. 12 green is what I heard the referee say. And Goran Papidza being asked if he's feeling all right by Rob Simmons. Why keep it going? Luke Whitelock asking if it's finished, has it finished or not? <laughs> Full time called by the referee, I think. And in the end, it's a victory for Poe that takes them up into second place provisionally. The tries came in the end, a wonderful one finished off at the end by Tuimaba as it's uh, finished here in this wonderful game. Poe 22, Claremont 11.